What's going on, folks? Is this thing using some fancy focusing thing on here? Usually, don't do it. So it's probably going to be totally out of focus when I go to put the video up. And then I and I put the mic on. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me let me let me get dialed in here. Damn it. In the shop, in the backyard shop today. Today we're going to go over. I just have a few parts I need to knock out for lead nav on our little high speed Fuse 1 printer back here. And when folks come over to my shop, this is the thing that kind of like amazes them. They're, they're like, what? It's like magic. So I'm going to quickly just kind of go over what it's doing, what it does, and the parts that we're making with it. I think the most high speed thing in any shed in North Carolina, at least, maybe the U.S. But, uh, it's the Form Labs SLS Fuse 1. It's actually the Fuse 1 Plus, their second generation of it. Pretty cool machine and capability to have in your backyard. We can make a lot of stuff with that. So I can go straight from design it on CAD. On, I, I use a Fusion 360 to design any part that I need. And then I can put it right to the machine and crank it out. If I'm going to do like a prototype of something, I'll usually do it on an FDM machine like this. It's a lot cheaper to run. Um, before I go and toss it in volume in the Fuse 1. The Fuse 1's great for, for uh, I'd say, low production of parts. You know, if you're doing like under 1,000 units, it's way more efficient. Uh, and if you're going to alternate the design, change up the design on something that you're making, you can't beat it. Uh, now, if you're going to look to sell, you know, tens of thousands of parts, well, then you might want to go to an injection mold. Everybody comes in and this usually impresses them. They're like, wow, look at that. Is that, that's cool. Well, this is not the printer, folks. This is the post-processing station for the printer. This takes the parts out of the printer, which are right over here. This takes the parts out of here. There's the inside of it. You have these uh, chamber pots right here that go inside with a little elevator in them. And basically this thing prints, folks are used to 3D printers being the, let me go over here, the, the filament style printer, like this awesome bamboo labs right here. Folks are used to this when you say 3D printing, which is like a, a roll of filament right here that basically puts a roll of this this roll of filament goes through a nozzle squeezes out plastic and layers it on top of each other well the difference is on an SLS it's powder based so you have jugs of powder and for you desert racers it's almost like silt I mean super fine like baby powder and that baby powder goes into a hopper up here. Which holds the powder and how it looks. So you put the powder in there, the chamber pot goes in and it basically puts a micron, like a super fine layer of powder down with these rollers out of the hopper. And then lasers. These lasers up here basically center, they, they weld the uh, part design into that single layer. And then the chamber's elevator goes down one micron, it puts another layer, welds it, another layer, welds it, another layer, welds it. So essentially you can pack these chamber pots as full as you want with parts. Uh, you, you gotta leave the recommended gap between the parts. But unlike a traditional 3D printer with filament, you can stack this entire chamber pot with your design of parts and in you know 24 hours this pot will be full of parts that is the the dumbed down version of it that i can give you all but anyway comes out of the printer i am using nylon 12 glass filled material which is pretty high-end material and it gives us a nice surface finish with the glass filled and gives us the temperature resistance that we need in our desert race cars this is the sift 
Basically, the parts will come out of the chamber and we will, this thing will like vibrate and it's got a little, I don't want to open it up. Oh, uh, here, let's see. See, it's got a little, little mesh. It's almost like uh, mining for gold. It's like a pan. I'll basically scrub the uh, parts with a brush, get all the loose powder that they're suspended in and you can recycle that and then you mix it with fresh powder a ratio of fresh powder in the uh, cartridge down here and then you dump that back in the printer and you get to recycle some of the waste in between the parts so with that after the parts uh, come out and you scrub them off they'll have a still like a hard coating on them a surface coating that we then take over here to the blast cabinet with glass bead we blast the parts off individually and then they get blown off with the air compressor and then they go into a dip tank of uh, writ dye to dye the parts black or we use graphite I think graphite looks a little bit better than a sharp black You can see right here, this is uh, one of the parts I do for a buddy of mine. It's a sheath for his uh, combat flatheads. Uh, old Dom Rosso at Dynamis. And you can see the finish on that and the quality of it. I mean, super hard product. I mean, it'd be similar to like a, a frame you'd find on a pistol, like the uh, polymer frame. Again, it's nylon 12 glass filled. And you can see the quality of that part. And that is something that you cannot do on a basic filament printer like this. Uh, this has a purpose though for prototyping and doing some other, you know, parts like, like these uh, fishing reels that we're doing in our new tackle boxes for Davy Jones. Great for doing stuff like that, but doing intricate prints and parts that you're gonna actually beat up on like this, uh, the SLS printer is the way to go. Plus I can knock out, you know, a hundred of these overnight versus doing them one by one on an FDM printer. So the parts that I'm knocking out are lead nav GPS antenna enclosures. I needed a couple more of the base plates for mounting on different things. We have three base options. We have a zip tie option that allows you to zip tie to a roll cage, or we have a direct bolt on with two bolts on it that you can bolt permanently to the car or Oh, we have a Velcro option, a slap option, which you can just put a piece of Velcro anywhere on your vehicle and slap it on. That's what this component is. It's an actual X GPS 160, and we use it in our lead nav GPS application uh, to boost the signal over what the internal GPS of an iPhone or a cell capable iPad has. That's a little tour of the Fuse One SLS machine here in the backyard. He shed. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, tell of your friends. Appreciate it. Later.